Perfect. Um, so you'll see icons around are all the solutions that we sell on the platform. You may only need one solution. Um, like a lot of our customers, when they first start out with Salesforce, and the beauty of it, the beauty of it is then you can expand as your company grows. Anything that we're not developing, we're acquiring. So such as Slack, which you may have heard of last year. Um, and we also have three non-impact upgrades every year. This just offers our customers the kind of latest and greatest in technology. The best thing, as I mentioned about being on the Salesforce platform, it doesn't matter what size business you are. Um, you have the same access to all of these solutions. You know, like I said, whether you're one person startup or you're the Nike of Adidas or this world, and then you just completely customize it for yourselves. Um, so I can't really talk about our background without just briefly touching on our core values. Um, so we've cut five core values. We added one this year, which is sustainability. Um, they're trust. So we act as trusted advisors. Um, we delivered industry's most trusted infrastructure. Customer success then speaks for itself. When our customers succeed, we succeed. Um, innovation. So our customers' input helps us to develop products. Um, and as I mentioned, we've got three upgrades every year to make sure that we're kind of keeping on top of of, of the industry. Um, equality then, so everybody deserves equal opportunity. You know, we believe everyone should be seen, heard and, and valued. Um, and then the final one then sustainability. So we lead boldly then to kind of address the climate change. Um, yeah. And then I guess the challenges. So I suppose with everything kind of going on in the current climate, um, we're seeing businesses kind of pausing new initiatives and focusing on kind of the essentials as they plan their budget for 2023. Um, I think it was kind of hard for us to shorten this list because when we speak to customers every single day, you know, there's, there's quite a few challenges, but these, I suppose, four or five were kind of the main ones that really stuck out to us um, because of our customers. So disjointed systems. So on average, SMBs use anything from seven to 50 apps at any one time. None of these systems are talking to each other. And if they do, they're not syncing information correctly or efficiently. This is leading to frustrated customers, teams, and business owners. Having a number of different systems also poses security risks, which we're kind of hearing more and more of every single day. And um, there's no single view of the customer. So, you know, somebody goes onto your website, they fill out your contact me form, happy days, um, but you've got absolutely no background information on them. You don't know what brought them to your website, if they're a legitimate customer, if they're a transition year student doing a project, um, and, you know, then the other side of it as well, there's kind of no personalization when you reach out to these people. Customer service issues are inevitable. I feel like at some point in our careers, we've all been in a situation where you've called up a customer wanting to sell a product and you realize as you're talking to them, there's a massive customer service issue. Um, it's just causes absolute havoc everywhere. So, yeah, having that single view is definitely important. Manual processes, then, you know, filling in spreadsheets and cross-checking information. It's incredibly time consuming. Um, a lack of real-time kind of accurate information for reporting. And actually, I've got a customer, Accounts IQ, who um, they've got 12 sales reps on their team. Those reps spend about 90 minutes a day filling in spreadsheets, like whether it's kind of updating their opportunities, um, updating forecasts. And when we spoke, we worked out that was 90 hours a week. If you were paying 13 euros per hour per sales rep, that was equating to 60,000 euros a year which it all seems, seems very small when you're kind of doing it individually, but when you actually put it together, it's a massive amount. Um, <clears throat> then the lack of reporting. So whether you're an individual contributor or CEO of your business, um, everybody needs to see kind of how they're tracking. Having disjointed systems or the kind of manual Excel spreadsheets means you can't report real-time accurate data. And this all leads into silo departments. So you've got frustrated employees and customers because of the lack of availability. Um, you've got time wasted, hello, you've got time wasted having to follow up then with other teams for any information. Um, another one I was actually at, uh, at Ludgate actually, I was yeah. down there, yeah, in Skibbereen um, last month at an agri-tech event, um, and there was a panel with three founders kind of talking through, you know, I guess how they kind of found starting up and if there was something that they could go back and change, what would it be? And they all kind of unanimously agreed that actually having business processes in place from day one would have helped them a lot down the line, especially as they started expanding their teams. So accelerating digital transformation then with Salesforce. Um, so with Salesforce, you've got all of your solutions on one secure platform. So vendor consolidation, where you reduce your competitor, um, or sorry, your supplier base to just a few trusted partners to kind of streamline that uh, procurement and to also save costs, which is kind of what everyone wants at the end of the day. 
this again brings us back to our customer 360. And um, so where we saw like sales, marketing, IT, all teams working together where they had that one single view of the customer from lead to loyalty. Um, using AI then in our sales and marketing tools, you can nurture those prospects until they're ready to buy. So if we go back to my point of somebody come fills in your contact form, I'm able to now see all the engagement that that person has had with the company. I can see, you know, what brought them to my website? Were they at an event? Did they download a white paper? Um, you know, did they leave something in their shopping basket? I can then, as a salesperson, reach out and have a more meaningful conversation. So rather than picking up the phone and kind of hoping for the best, I can say, oh, I saw you downloaded our white paper. Can we talk more about it? Um, again, then after you guide them through the sales process, you introduce them to the customer success team and that team has full visibility, their whole interaction the full way through. And it's just kind of giving off that great customer service. And um, Forbes did a study earlier this year and um, that said 93% of customers have higher expectations than ever before um, because they know that brands now kind of have the option, I guess, to invest in it. Um, and because I suppose the leading brands are doing so, customers are expecting from every single brand. Um, it's also really important then for your marketing team and their outreach. Another personal example is I bought um, an electric toothbrush from a leading um, Irish, what would you call it, or a healthcare brand. And um, they know before I do, when I'm about to run out of toothpaste, I'll get an email and I'm like, oh gosh, yeah, actually I could do it getting whatever toothpaste, the new toothbrush head. And it always ends up being, I'll go onto the website, I'll forget, I'll get distracted by something else. A day or two later, they'll email me again. It'll be a reminder, oh, you've got something in your basket. You know, here's a 5% discount. And funnily enough, every time I go on, I'll always end up spending more money than I had actually anticipated. And it's funny how the product you sell every single day is actually the one that's costing you more money down the line, um, which is great for them. Um, and then I guess Salesforce takes the kind of manual effort of transferring information because everything's automated. Your reports and dashboards are completely customizable. And um, it's very easy to create these and, Tracy will actually walk us through that, just kind of how visual that can be and how helpful it can be to the team. And then having aligned teams just is that kind of holistic view. There's no silo between the departments. Marketing are talking to sales, sales are talking to surface and so on. Um, and yeah, another just good one, investing in the right technology can save time and money in the long term because whatever the future holds, you can guarantee that digital transformation will be the key to navigating it successfully. And I feel like that kind of summed it all up quite nicely. I'm just going to briefly touch on some success metrics. So we did a survey of 3,700 customers in 2022 globally. Um, and the results kind of, well, as you can see, sales teams found an increase of 29% in productivity because they were able to automate these processes, giving the sales reps more autonomy when it came to outreach. Um, with Service Cloud, which is our customer success tool, they found that support costs lowered by 27%. Customers were actually able to self-serve on the website and it reduced call handling time. And it just meant then that service agents were actually able to kind of deal with people who really needed their help. Um, marketing cloud then, so the cost of finding new customers reduced by 27%, just made renewals a lot easier. And with Tableau then for reports and dashboards, customers were able to get kind of real-time insights faster and the information was much more reliable. And this is the final slide from me. So this is their customer story. So it's actually one of Tracy's customers, Social Talent. Um, so they're based in Dublin and they're the world's leading learning experience platform um, specifically designed for hiring professionals. Their goal is to help companies upskill um, employees and drive greater productivity. They were founded in 2010 and their kind of aim was to double the revenue year on year. And by 2015, they had actually tripled it. Um, at this stage, they, need, they knew that they needed good people and good processes to keep kind of growing and innovating. So they decided they'd have to look for a CRM system. They decided to go for Salesforce. And in 2016, they introduced Sales Cloud um, into the business. Um, they didn't want to be in a position where I suppose customers or prospects had a bad experience. And that was why they kind of needed to focus on their process. Um, having then the single source of truth that they had with Sales Cloud was really important when it came to sales metrics and customer information. It freed up a lot more time for their sales teams because they no longer needed to ask other teams, you know, before they reached out to a customer. They were able to use dashboards to display forecasts for the entire year. And then this wider field kind of just helped employees, again, to kind of be able, I suppose, to, to see their target for the entire year and identify areas of improvement. And there was a massive shift in behavior where kind of people were more focused on those long-term goals and then were able to deliver higher results. 
So since their implementation, they were able to cut book to bill time by 50%. And um, they were losing time between booking the sale to invoicing the customer, which was affecting cash flow. Um, and kind of touch on they're using Salesforce then to kind of proactively nurture those leads, like I mentioned already. And the marketing team then can focus on the activities they know that are draw driving engagement. And then the quality of service that they're offering is kind of second to none and con renewal conversations are just much easier. Um, that is me. I'm now going to hand you over to Tracy, who is going to walk us through the demo. Thanks very much. Right. Thanks, Sarah. And thank you guys for being here. And thanks to everybody online as well. Um, so look, we're obviously under a bit of time pressure today, right? So we're not going to be showing you all the bells and whistles of Salesforce. But the idea is to just give you an overview of the kind of things that we do and to kind of put a face to what Sarah's talked us through. With that said, I still kind of want it to be as interactive as possible sorry let me exit this so if you do have questions pop them in the chat maybe you'll monitor that for me as well or if you guys here want to ask any questions feel free all right so we're going to kind of um put on three hats today so i'm just going to hide this three hats we're going to start with our marketing hat where we're going to look at kind of finding leads when we find those leads what are we doing with them how are we going to nurture them and kind of bring them down the sales journey we'll then put on our sales hat and we'll show you what it's like for a salesperson and what they can do to, I suppose, follow an opportunity through, put in a, you know, a strict business process to close deals. And then we will touch on the final bit, which is servicing your customers, keeping them. Because we all know it's way harder to find new business than it is to, to keep old business. Is that all okay? Everyone yeah. okay with that? Great. So first thing you can see here, I am logged into Salesforce. You don't need to download software. It's all online. This is our marketing tool in particular. And as Sarah mentioned on the 360 slide, this is a platform. So each solution sits on that one platform. So we're in marketing here, but if I press this burger, you'll be able to see sales, you'll be able to see service. We can hop between them so that everybody has the same view and it all feels the same, all right? So from the marketing perspective, we're putting on our marketing hat first. We have uh, this kind of overview page where we can see our prospects. What have we got today? What have we got last week? What have we got last month? We can see them all as they're coming in. We can have a marketing calendar. So that kind of means like my boss, Kelly, she would be able to log on here and have a look. Well, what events are we actually running? Your CEO can see what are we doing without maybe getting in touch with you. All right. From a prospect perspective, right? And when we speak about prospects, we're really talking about people who are early days engaged with our business, right? We don't even know if they're the right decision maker. We don't know if they're actually in the, the buying process, but we still want to start tracking them from the get-go. So what you'll see here is we have a whole list of prospects um, here, and I'm going to click into one to kind of explain it a little bit further. We'll look at Justine as an example. We can see Justine's overarching details. We can see all her activities. So, you know, when we sent her an email, we can see when she's clicking on that. We can see uh, anything that she's gone onto our website. You'll see beside that there is a score. And if I scroll down here, we'll see this kind of score and grade. OK, so these are two separate things, but really, really important. Our score is how interested Justine is in our business. Every time Justine engages with us, she opens a link, she goes on our website, she registers for an event, we increase that score, okay? Up until the point that we say, Justine's super engaged with us, we now want to actually reach out to her from a sales perspective. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a dry throat. Um, on the grade side, that's how interested we are in Justine. All right, because Justine might be all over our website and really engaged, but she could be a student or Justine actually might be a competitor, even worse, right? So we may not want to waste our salesperson's time engaging with that. All right, does that all make sense so far? No. Okay. So let's just say we have our list of prospects now. What do we kind of do with them? How are we engaging them? Obviously, we have our social media channels, but we can also set up automation journeys, okay? I'm going to take a top of mind one. Generally, the top of mind one would be somebody who is interested in our business, but not quite ready yet to buy. So we'll put them in this journey, okay? I have had customers who use this automation for new business, right? So for targeting people, also for renewals, right? If you have subscriptions-based business, people that are going to, you know, have a renewal in six months, you can start targeting them here. You can use it for pretty much anything, events, you're running sales, but I'll show you a, a simple test version anyway, right? What happens here is we'll add our targets in and this will all happen behind the screen. So we don't have our marketing people spending all their time doing all this. And we can see the first thing that's actually happened is we've sent a blog, right? And we can see there, there's the email, there's the detail that's within that blog. And then Salesforce is going to listen in the background to see if they're engaging with it. Have they clicked the link? Have they opened it even? 
all right we're going to say they have because we're we're uh, optimistic here when we actually get a response we can see down below there um we're adjusting the score we're adding 10 points to it if they don't engage it okay maybe no they don't get an added score and they might just stay in this journey over and over but again our intention here is increasing the score enough to say that they're engaged enough with our business that we're going to pass this over to a salesperson to pick up the phone and engage with them Question, yes, yeah. please. Camilla says, has Salesforce helped the client find the scheme in the first place or has the client found her and uploaded uh, details to the Salesforce? Great question. Great question. Both is the answer. Okay. So these, these, these leads could come from your social media channels. They might come from your website. So if they fill in, um, you know, like a contact us form, it will retrospectively go back and, and catch all the information um, that they've ever done on our website. This could be somebody, you might find a prospect yourself and say you want to target them. You can upload them here into the site as well. So a multitude of ways. Okay. And are the prospects um, related to each person, each Salesforce person? Yeah. Or is it to every, available to everyone and then gets assigned to different people? So when a prospect comes in, who owns it, I suppose, yeah. is what you're asking. Yeah, that's a good question as well. So I guess when a prospect first comes in here, it's the marketer who's going to own this, okay? Because the marketer is going to decide okay, maybe the salesperson should pick it up straight away. No, they need a little bit more nurturing. Yeah. This can be automated with the scores in the background, but we can absolutely send it straight to a salesperson. And that's where we're going now. We're going to look at what does a salesperson do now, right? This lead, let's say, has come in. We think they're engaged. How are we going to action them? Yeah. Is that all right? Is there any more questions before I do move on? No, she did. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Um, I could spend half the day looking at this, but I'm conscious of time. Just to be clear, anybody who wants to see a little bit more of this or a more detailed or like personalized demo, you can reach out to me or to Sarah. We're happy to show you. We're just, this is quite quick today and I appreciate that. Um, so let's say we get to the end here and we've decided Justine is actually ripe and she's ready and she wants to be, uh, we want a salesperson to ring her. I'm going to now put on my salesperson hat. We're leaving marketing for the moment. And again, I'm just literally jumping between tabs here almost, right? It's that simple. This is going to look the same as our last screen, but slightly different because this is aimed at a salesperson and what a salesperson needs to see. Everything that you see on Salesforce is customizable. So some information you may not want to see. You can have rules in place that maybe only, you know, like management sees certain things. It's whatever way you want to do. But this is a generic one. It's actually quite similar to what we would use ourselves in Salesforce. So when I log in as a salesperson, I'm seeing an overview of my business and what I need to see, right? How much have I closed? 2.5 million. That sounds all right to me. I have my pipeline, how many deals I have in each stage and how much money is there. Activities, we track activities in Salesforce. It's very important to us because the way we see it, activities lead to more opportunities, which leads to revenue, all right? So it's almost like a competition to who's doing the most activity, who's, who's like picking up things. We have things like, again, a leaderboard, competitive salespeople, who's actually selling the most, right? Um, we have a forecast, then we can see, well, what have we got planned for each month? Maybe I need to actually do a little bit more work to get some more pipeline for January, as an example. It's just visualizing that for you. Top accounts, who's our biggest buyers, I guess, right? You probably want to give them, make sure they're extra loved and, and paid attention to. You can have things like tasks and events, you know, linked back to your calendar so that you can actually be staying in the one place focus and not jumping between different solutions and we have then items of approval so if you are a manager you may want to sign off on discounts given over 10 percent, as an example that can automatically route for approval so i'm going to jump into a lead so this now let's just say that we're going to be from justine we're going to look at frederick from here from a sales perspective right these these can be passed over for marketing as a salesperson, you might go out and find your own leads. You might add them in. You can import them in here. Or what can happen is on your website, on that contact us page, when somebody fills in those details, that can automatically pull a lead in here. You can have rules in place to say, um, all leads that come from Cork should go to Sarah. And all leads that come from Wicklow, because that's where I'm from, should come to Tracy. Or break it down whatever way you are. So it's automatically done, essentially. Different list views, recently viewed, hot leads, new leads leads that died you can break it down whatever way you need to but this looks like an excel sheet right which i'm sure a lot of people on this call are probably using um when we speak to customers a lot of them are still on excel and that's fine so it, it's familiar but the devil's in the detail right when i click into frederick i'm going to get so much more information from him here okay i'll come back to this in a, in a second but when we scroll down we can see the details about frederick when we pick up that phone and we make that phone call we should be adding details right and that's the, the ideal hope 
And what you'll see here is this activity tracker on the side. So we want to track from our first engagement all activity with Frederick or with any lead. So that let's say Sarah goes off on holiday and she just dumps all her leads on me. I can pick it up and I can see, OK, well, you know what? Sarah has a task coming up that I need to fulfill or she sent an email. What is the engagement back and forth? So you can email directly from within Salesforce. You can have templates in here or you can send an email from your own Outlook or Gmail. And then we link that and you can uh, log it into Salesforce. All right. Same with calls, tasks and events. And as I said, that's really important to us in Salesforce is that we're tracking all these. You'll see this little power dot tab here, and this relates back to that 360 view. Let's say this did come from marketing. We can click here and we can see everything that Frederick has viewed from our website in the past, whatever, six months. So when I pick up the phone and I ring him, I'm having a really detailed conversation. I'm not, I'm not asking him, you know, what are you looking at? I know already what he's looking at. Finally, then on the lead, right? I guess the idea here is that we are working through a process to make sure that he's qualified enough for us to actually open an opportunity. All right. Now, there's four stages here. In your business, you may need 10, you may need one, you may need two. Everything in Salesforce is customizable. Every field you see, you can add your own details into, okay? But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to say that we've, we've given him a call. We know he's interested. He's keen to go. And I'm going to convert this lead now to an actual opportunity. Does that all make sense so far? Yeah. Any questions coming in around that? No. No? All good. Okay. So if I was to convert Frederick here, I'll create an account for Karen PLC, which is a fictitious, fictitious company I made up. Um, I'm going to create a contact for Frederick and I'll create that opportunity. Okay. But I'm just going to show you it kind of in a manual way, just to make it uh, more clear, I guess. So along the top, I'm going to move over to my opportunities tab. Again, this looks the same, slightly different uh, information that we're being presented with, but it's that same feel across it. Okay. I can see all my different opportunities here. I can see the stage, the amount that they're going for all those details. But we're going to stick with Karen here. So again, we have a path across the top. It's different to the lead because this one is where the, the detail really is. And in Salesforce, we actually can't move past like a certain stage without filling in mandatory information about one of our opportunities, whether that is a competitor's information, whether that is the time that they're, you know, they're buying scale, whatever the case is, we fill in those details because if it's not in Salesforce, it doesn't happen. That's our motto, essentially. All right. So we hopefully we'll be moving a, a deal across here uh, up to our proposal and quote stage, for example. You'll see the guidance for success is updating every time I move. These are the steps that you should be completing at each stage. This is what we deem best practice. And it means that when new people join and in Salesforce, lots of new people join, they don't necessarily, and I don't want to say bug, but they don't have to um, take a lot of time for maybe a more tenured salesperson asking questions constantly, right? It's there. It's ticking off the box. What, what do I need to do here? We have all the details about the opportunity, right? So the amount, the close date, our description, our next steps. As we move through these steps, our probability is increasing each time. What's really important in Salesforce on this page here is our amount, because that's how we forecast our revenue. Our close date, what month are we actually forecasting this for? And our next step, what are we actually doing next? I guess, right? Uh, that's what my manager wants to know. Where are you? When are you going to speak to them next? What are you doing? On the right-hand side, we have our activity still. So that's feeding through the whole way through this process, right? Again, a colleague can pick it up. It's visible for everyone to see what we're doing here. We also have then our contacts, okay? So, you know, you know yourself, you may have more than one person in a company that you're dealing with in a sale. So you can have them marked here. What a lot of my customers do is they have their product catalog in Salesforce, right? And you might have that in a finance system. You might have it in Excel, but you can upload that here. And when you have that product catalog, you can add products to an opportunity, which will drive the actual value. It will update automatically. But what it means you can do is you can create pretty basic PDF quotes that send out, but they're white labeled, they're your logo, they're your, your terms and conditions, all that information. I'll create one very quickly here just to show you, right? We'll call it a test or test as example. You can put an expiration date on it. Generally speaking, if we're gonna have a discount, right? To sign by the end of the year, you might put an expiration date. And remember that discount can go for approval to a manager or whoever needs to approve it. When we create a simple PDF, as I said, it'll have all your own details on it. 
we can see um, all the information necessary for a quote, all the uh, actual line items and the terms and conditions. And you can email that by PDF, whatever way you send it. If you use a DocuSign or an Adobe Sign or PandaDoc, we integrate with all of them. We actually use DocuSign ourselves, essentially, um, to send that out. Any questions there? Does that all make sense so far? Tracy, can you hear me? No, all good. Any <laughs> questions here? You can, you don't have to write, but you can. And what we call it, it's, it's called Salesforce inbox. And it's like a little plugin on your Gmail. So I use it every day. So on it, I'm sorry, I can't show you now because I have a, a demo and it'll be my live Gmail, but I'll send you a video on it after. What happens is on the side, it will have, it will pull information from Salesforce in there. So you'll see the contact you're emailing. You'll be able to press a log button to log the email. Yeah. You don't have to log every email because I could send five pleasantry emails. I don't want them clogging up this activity section here. Okay, yeah. So I can log them if I, if I choose to essentially. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? But like my Gmail would also be logged here. So if I open this, it should be, that's like, that's my actual email there. So it's linked both ways. So I can send an email from your, I tend to send it from my Gmail as well. In that, then you can do things like Bit Big Brother. You can see opening of emails. You can see when it's been opened, last how many times it's been opened. You can send calendar availability from your own Gmail. It will pull it through. Um, it's really handy, really handy. Remind me to send you a video on that. I will. Any question here? Yeah. Does Salesforce offer capacity to sync social media output across platforms? Yes, it does. LinkedIn, Facebook. Absolutely. Yep. So there's a couple of things there. All right. And I don't know if this is from a sales or a marketing perspective, right? From, from a marketing perspective, yes, we sync with all those uh, social media tools. It can actually pull in your impressions, your responses, your likes, so that where we were looking at that score and grade, it can influence that. And you can also schedule posts to go out from Salesforce uh, on all your socials. From a, a sales perspective, which is like how I would work, I'm also uh, have my LinkedIn navigator hooked up to Salesforce. So I can pull in leads, you know, that I'm looking at, I can communicate with them and it will, it will log all that. That was from a marketing perspective. From a marketing yeah. perspective. Absolutely. If, and again, guys, I'm conscious because it is so whistle stop. Anybody who wants to see more details, more videos, we can share content with you after just ping us and, and let us know. And uh, we'll share how that works. All right. Okay. So we've, Created a quote, right? That we're going to send out to the customer. That's fine. Let's say that I need my manager to have a look at this. This uh, functionality is called Chatter and it's like an internal collaboration tool. Like, so I can at mention, I think there's a chat in here, if I'm correct. Yeah. Chat, can you review as an example? Normally I'd say, please, I'm just under time pressure. Um, and Chat will get a notification. He'll get an email and he'll also get a notification up here in Salesforce to say, you've received a comment and you can go back and you can comment back and forth. The beauty of that being everything is stored here in the one place. There's no water cooler conversations where, you know, he said, he said, she said, mm -hmm. everybody can see it. I would use this now with our service team, for example, or maybe our renewals team billing. I'll at mention them and say, what's the latest here, whatever the case may be. Make sense. Yeah. Any more questions around an opportunity? I'm going to assume that we won this deal unless there's anything we need to, uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. Does Salesforce offer prospecting tools? Prospecting tools, absolutely. I'm not going to cover it today. I can send more information. We're going to look at a dashboard that kind of looks at prospecting, but we have what we call is high velocity sales. And that's very much focused on, I suppose, that business development piece, right? Finding those leads, putting kind of cadences in place that we follow to target them systematically, whether it's like, you know, an email on a Monday, Wednesday, LinkedIn um, ad, Thursday, pick up the phone and it's it's running through that process. So yes, apologies, we're not covering it today. But again, if you want to ping us over, we can send you information on, on the back of that. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's say we followed all our steps. We sent our quote. They're more than happy to go. They're not even going to argue back or look for more discount from us, which is great. We can then go ahead and we can close win this opportunity. Okay. So on the close one and the close last, really important that we track this because when we pull reports, we can look back and we can see what deals we lost last year? Never mind what we want, what we lost. Why do we lose it? When are we to follow up? How can we re-engage them? Maybe we send them back to marketing to the top of mind campaign that we looked at earlier. 
All right. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the overall account here for care, because this is where we get the 360 view of a customer. OK. As a salesperson, like I don't necessarily want to be ringing maybe somebody in the service team or in marketing asking them what's happening with this person. I just want to see it all here in a simple place. And this is what this page gives you. OK. We have all our account details, information about them. Again, any fields you want to track, you can. We have all our activity down the side here, okay? We have the contacts, everybody associated with the, co the company. And then we have our sales. So any opportunity that we've ever had with Karen will be here, right? Whether we lost it and we didn't win it, whether we did win it or whether it's open, they are all tracked here. It means that for me as an example, let's say I have a sales cloud customer and they evaluated marketing two years ago. I can go and retarget them and say, maybe now is the right time to actually pick that phone up, right? Whereas if that's not stored somewhere like this, chances are it might be in Excel. You, you just might lose track of the fact that they ever even looked at that with you. All right. Again, as a salesperson, right? And we, this is literally how our sales force looks. We have cases. I can see any open tickets with the service team. And as Sarah touched on earlier, this is really important that before I maybe pick up that phone and I'm trying to upsell or cross sell to a customer, I know that they've got no open issues that I'm uh, like walking into like a hot fire in. Okay. I can see all the cases, the status of them, how long they've been open, when they've been logged without having to log into a different system. I'm going to touch on service now, but I'm actually going to put on the service hat and act like a service person. The last thing I want to show you here is around the billing. Again, as a salesperson, I don't even know what um, ERP system we use in Salesforce because I don't need to know. What I can see here when I log on to a customer account is their invoices. I can see them. I can send them to the customer. I can see the status if they're like pending or if they've not been paid, if they're overdue. Again, I know before I pick up that phone what the status is, but I don't have to go into a finance system and I don't have to ring finance to find out what's going on. That all make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any questions around the account? All good. Any questions here around the account? All make sense? Perfect. So two more things we're going to look at. We're going to look at it, what it, this, this world looks like from a servicing perspective, right? And then we're going to wrap up with the dashboards, which is kind of that overarching piece. And it gives you, I suppose, visual representation of from each department of what's happening in the business. So again, I'm literally going to move to the other solution in Salesforce, but staying on that platform. So we're going to look at service. It looks very similar uh continue sorry don't mind that omnichannel it looks very similar to the sales piece but it's different information okay they're seeing different things because this is what's relevant to them instead of maybe how much business i've closed they're seeing how many cases have i got open what's the priority of those cases what is the different type is it account management issues is it product issues we can see our resolution times our sla our response times make sure that we're not in the red anyway right hopefully in the green but not in the red um, we can also see things like my team's cases. So who has what cases? So like Stephen can't exactly pretend to be really busy when I can see he's got the least amount of cases, but maybe here we have somebody, there's two of them waiting on the customer. Okay. So we're not worried that we're not responding on time. That's on them. We can see the different channels they're coming in through. Let's say you could have social, like social media, like, I don't know, Facebook messenger connected to this. So if somebody messages you, that'll create a case in here. And then finally, this one is a uh, service sourced revenue, which I think service never get credit for. But if let's say they find an opportunity of an upsell, we can also see that here. So it's kind of looking at it, not so much as a cost center, but more as a profit center. All make sense? Okay. Amazing. So we'll jump in and we'll have a look at a case just to get an idea. Okay. So again, looks similar, looks kind of like an Excel, but when we click in, we're actually going to get real information. All right. So we'll take this one as an example. Our power adapter is not charging, right? We can see this has come from Lauren Bailey. We can see that she's from Cairn. We can see all the account details and we can see these cases from the parent company. So we can see other cases that are open. Maybe they've got like five open cases and we should be worried that they're really going to escalate issues or you know what i can see there's two cases i'll just take them both and work them together all right so that's the kind of i'd look at this as like three parts right we've got the left hand side which is all about our customer the middle is our engagement with them again similar to the sales we have a system in place of what we should be doing our guidance for success is updating as we move along up to the point where hopefully we're closing the case off okay again similar to 
in the sales piece, we can communicate from within here. Of course, we can communicate from our emails. You can set up a, a dedicated email address like support at cairn.com, as an example. Any email that comes in there is going to create a case here in Salesforce for you. Okay. Similar, we can create rules that all product issues go to Sarah. All invoicing issues come to me, as an example. All right. But we're kind of tracking all our communication down the middle here, everything that's happening. And then on, finally, on the right-hand side, we have some automation happening for us, okay? So we have a milestone, for example, is from a case being logged, we've got 24 hours to respond. It will start a countdown timer to remind us. Luckily, we're in time here. We have next best actions, right? This is telling us that maybe it might be nice to send them a, a thank you for being a loyal customer. And then we have knowledge articles here. So depending on what sort of case is logged, you can have articles already created and you can literally attach them or embed that text into an email. And the purpose of that is for saving time for your service people to not be writing the same email over and over again. Does that all make sense? Yeah. We any questions coming in there? No, perfect. Um, conscious of the time, we all, like it is very possible to have what we would call a portal on, on your website, right? Where your customers can log in. From there, they can update their own customer information. They can live chat with you. They can log cases. Not going to get to show that today. Anybody who'd like to see that, just reach out. We'll show you happily. It's no problem. But what I wanted to do now was show you some dashboards. All right. So here we go now. Any field in Salesforce can be put into a Salesforce report. And any report can make a beautiful looking dashboard, right? To be honest, I work off dashboards. It's just much easier. You create them once, they're there, and all you got to do is refresh them, right? So I'm going to start with, we'll start with a, a sales executive one, right? The service one we've kind of seen on that homepage. A sales executive dashboard here is going to give a manager an overview of everything that's happened in the business. Maybe it's your CEO who's not day-to-day -day in your sales piece, right? We see closed business, our pipeline, our leaderboards. I'm top of my own leaderboards. It's not a great look for me in a demo. Um, we can see our key opportunities. What are the biggest opportunities that we're trying to work on? What's our forecast? How are we going to plan our revenue for the next couple of months? We can see the pipeline that people are creating. And again, in Salesforce, this is really important. The more pipe you're creating, the more likely you are to close. So we focus an awful lot on that. We can see competitors in our deals too, right? If we're tracking that and you can make that mandatory, as I said. We can see our, our year on year growth and the type of business. Is it add-ons that we're mainly getting or are we bringing in new business? And again, as I said, activities relay to your revenue, right? The more you're doing, the better. And obviously I'm doing very well here. Um, as I said, you can pretty much report on anything, but I want to go back to uh, the prospecting because we had a question around that, right? So this would be, I guess, more for maybe your sales team or if you have BDRs or SDRs, this might be where they'd look, okay? As a salesperson, I might use this coming up to quarter end, right? If I'm trying to find a few extra uh, bits of revenue to come in, we can see, you know, products that don't have a service contract. Can we upsell? Upcoming renewals is a great one as well, right? And as I said, we can have those renewal automation emails starting to trickle out to your customers six months in advance, but we can see what opportunities are there. Can we cross and upsell? We have, you know, accounts without recent activity. This is really important in Salesforce as well. We do not like to see accounts that have no activity. You should be in touch with your customers, checking in. If you're not selling, making sure they're happy at least. All right. Here's one here around those opportunities that are lost. When we track what we're not winning, we can then retarget them. All right. So we can see there was just no decision made. When did that happen? How much was it for? Can we re-engage them? Um, upgrades as well here. There's a sales rep one as well. This is probably more for your like people on the ground, like an account exec like me might, might look at this and it's really pertaining to my own business. What can I be doing more of, okay? And we, we've kind of seen a lot of this on, on the previous page, but it's to focus the mind. Like you don't get this, this kind of view when you're using an Excel sheet, I guess, right? Um, it's to bring it all, it's to visually bring it to life, I suppose, for your sales team to hopefully motivate them and, and also just give them the power to sell more. I've been talking a lot at you all, really sorry. That is a lot of information in a very short space of time. Um, that's all I'm going to cover for now. Again, happy to have separate calls and show more, talk more. But is there any questions before we wrap up? Hopefully that was useful. Uh, we're more than happy to help in any way we can. We appreciate there's a lot of startups here. 
that's as, as Sarah said our focus but also we want to make sure that you know the Ireland economy is booming right because it, it's helpful to us so we're here to help even if it's not necessarily that you want to buy Salesforce if there's any questions anybody has about how we run our business in Salesforce feel free to ask we're we're more than happy to to get involved thank you that's it